Hello friends, my name is Josh. Welcome to Flight Test Tech. Today we're going to be showing you how to build the Easy Butterfly. Now the Easy Butterfly is part of our Nature 3 pack and it's specifically designed and collaborated with our dear friends Ben and Natalie Harbour. Ben and Natalie share our love for education, our love for people, and our love for flight. Our Nature Pack is a phenomenal addition to our Easy Series because this Nature Pack can fly indoors and in small gymnasiums. The FT Easy Butterfly only takes about 15 minutes to build, so make sure that you put your battery on charge now and also install three AA batteries on the back of your transmitter. The only tools that we're gonna to need to build our Easy Butterfly is a hot glue gun. So let's go ahead and get our materials in order and we'll get started. So the first thing we're gonna do with our Easy Butterfly is we're gonna pop all the pieces out that you see here and then we're gonna identify them. Now that we have our all the pieces popped out for our Easy Butterfly, let's go ahead and describe them all and then we'll start building. First, we have our main wing. Secondly, we have the lower and upper portion of our fuselage. We have our two front nose doublers and we have our dihedral gauge. Let's go ahead and put the front of our fuselage to the side here and we're gonna concentrate on getting the proper amount of dihedral using our dihedral gauge and our main wing. You're gonna notice a little tiny etch mark on the one side of the right of the fuselage. This little etch mark is gonna be exactly where our dihedral gauge is gonna pop in. Using our thumb and our forefingers, we're gonna put a little bit of a bend right in the center of our wing, right over the score cut. This is gonna help us establish the proper amount of dihedral by allowing the lower wing to sit flat up against the table and the dihedral gauge to easily hold the other side of the wing up. Once we're happy with that, we can open up the cavity in the center. We'll place a bead of glue starting to stop at about a quarter inch from the edge. Make sure I hold my dihedral gauge in place and we're gonna hold that down in place. If any little glue squeezes up, feel free to use a scrap piece of foam and wipe it off. Give this about a minute to a minute and a half to fully dry so you can remove your dihedral gauge and the wing doesn't sag. Once our glue is fully dry, we should be able to remove our dihedral gauge and the wing doesn't drop at all. Now that our dihedral is established, we're gonna take the lower portion of our fuselage and we're gonna line it up with the very bottom of our wing. Now it's really important that we make sure that we line up the center portion of our fuselage with the center crease of the center of our wing. If it's one side or the other, that's gonna cause the airplane to unnecessarily turn. Once we're happy with how everything looks, I'm just gonna leave the fuselage on its back. I'm gonna paste a nice bead of glue right down the center cavity of the bottom of the fuselage. And with the nose pointing in the front by the notches of the wing, we're gonna glue this down into place. Now it's really important that whenever we're holding this down that we make sure that the wings are raised equally on both sides of the center of the fuselage or the center of the body. Dihedral is incredibly important on everything you see, whether it's on aircraft or even in nature. Whenever an aircraft has dihedral, as the wing dips lower on the lower side, it's gonna generate more lift, helping it to equalize. This is really important because this gives the plane the incredible self-stabilizing ability and helps it fly better too. Now that we have the lower portion of the fuselage, let's go ahead and concentrate on the upper portion. We're first gonna just do a practice fit. Again, making sure this lines up with the very back and the very front. And then we can come back, go right along. Oops, let's put a little bit of glue on the very back too. We'll line it up on the back and on the front. And once everything's lined up, give this about a minute to fully dry and then we'll move on to our doublers. Our next step is to align our fuselage doublers and to make sure that the battery slot and all around the perimeter of the doubler lines up evenly. Once we're happy with the way that fits, we can slide this off. We'll lay a bead of glue down. I like to kind of trace the perimeter first and then maybe a couple of zigzags in the middle. And then we'll press it down into place. Give it nice, even pressure, making sure that everything is flush. You can remove any extra glue with a scrap piece of foam and we'll let it dry. Same process now on the other side. We're just gonna do a quick test fit. Make sure that the battery slot is flush all around the front and the nose is flush. And then we can take this surface and cover it with glue and glue it down. Kind of 
like to creep it up and down just a little bit, and press it in place. At this point, the airframe of our FT Easy Butterfly is now complete. We're ready to move on to our next step, which is installing the props and the motors and putting them onto the airframe. Our new V2 Easy Pack has more powerful motors, and in the new packaging here, we have a sticker pack, we have clear strips to uh, help us lock in our elevator controls, and we also have more powerful motors and more powerful batteries. In our Easy Pack kit, you're gonna see that we have a red motor, and we have a blue motor, and then we have two props that are labeled A and B. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna first unwrap our motors. And I'm gonna focus on the blue motor because the blue motor for me with Tractor is the easiest thing to remember here. You're gonna find the markings for your A and B prop. If you go to the round nub on the prop and then you just look to the right or the left, you're gonna see a little stamped A or a little stamped B. The B prop in this case with the Tractor style is gonna go with the blue motor. So just remember blue, B, B prop. The orientation of how the prop is installed is also very important. When your plane is gonna be flying in a tractor configuration, this little tiny bump is actually gonna to face towards the motor, which means the B is gonna to face towards the motor. We wanna use the table as our friend, so we'll take this right to the edge of the table, just like you see here. We're supporting the back of the motor, and that's very important so we don't damage the motor as we push the prop on. And we're gonna line up the little tiny hole on the very tip of the prop. Again, round bump pointing towards the motor. And then with the gentle pressure of our hand, we're gonna push the prop right onto the motor shaft. This does take a little pressure the very first time you do it, so take your time, and there you have it. Let's go ahead and put our A prop on our red motor. Here's our little A marking, here's our little round bump. The bump is gonna point towards the motor, just like that. And we're gonna take it to the table, use the table as our friend, line up the little tiny hole, and with some gentle pressure, press it down on the shaft. Now that we have the motors and the props installed in the proper orientation, again, B being with the blue motor for tractor and A being for the uh, red motor with tractor and make sure the nubs are pointed down, we can now install on our airframe. Now for the butterfly here, we're gonna go ahead and put the butterfly with the nose pointing away from us. And just like when we're in a car, the driver's side is the left side and the passenger side is the right side. As you can see, we have these little markings here. We have the R for the blue side. So we're gonna go ahead and flip this over on its back, keeping in mind that when we flip it over, the right side becomes the left side and we're gonna install it on the very bottom. Always like to do a quick test fit to make sure that everything is good. And once we're happy with that, two little drops of glue right on each side. We'll clip it down and press it flat. Make sure that whenever you push this down that both the front clips here are flush with the leading edge of the wing and that they're not angled one way or the other. This will cause the airplane to want to turn during flight. I'm going to pass the black and white lead of the blue wire right through the hole here. This will make it easier for us to hook up to our flight control board. Now we can do the same process on the red side. So red is gonna go on the left, but obviously when we turn it upside down, because we're working on the bottom of the airframe, that'll be on our right-hand side. Quick test fit. Two little drops of glue. And we'll press it down and into place. Now that our motors are installed, let's go ahead and install our flight control board. Our flight control board is located inside of our little tiny anti-static bag. We're gonna carefully remove that. And it's really important that we mount this. We mount this on the left-hand side with the battery lead facing forward, the switch pointing down, which in this case, because the airframe's upside down, is gonna be facing up. And before I glue this in, I always like to install the uh, lead that passes through the fuselage because it's just easier to do it first. Now I can put a drop of glue on bottom on both sides. If you're an educator and you wanna be able to easily remove this flight control board and hop from plane to plane, an easy trick is to actually be able to take a zip tie, pop a little hole there and zip tie it down. Two little drops of glue are easy enough to remove, especially with something like a plastic gift card. I'm gonna go ahead and press this down into place. Notice I'm putting it right between the two edge lines. And I'm gonna hold it there until it's fully dry. Next, I'm gonna take my red connector. You'll notice that these connectors are either red in color or have a red dot on them. I'll line it right over my red connector there and then press it down. 
Now you're gonna notice with our EasyPack V2s that we have a really cool data card here. It has QR codes leading to more information, instructional videos that you're probably watching right now. But also on the other side, we have this really cool sticker pack. This sticker pack gives you flight test stickers, but on the other side, these are little rectangle stickers that help you not only lock in maybe certain angles of your elevons or your elevator, but they also give you the ability to help dress your wires. I'm gonna go ahead and take two of our little stereo strips here. I'm gonna pull our wires back, get them nice and organized, and I'm gonna lock them down with a piece of tape. There's one side. And here's the second side. Now the really cool thing about our butterfly is our butterfly flies naturally just a little bit nose up in what we call high alpha, which means it's using the props and the relative angle of attack to fly forward. You can change the characteristics by moving the elevons up or down, and you can use these little tiny stickers to be able to lock in that angle. For right now, for our first flights, I'm gonna leave these perfectly neutral because I really like the way that this flies in high alpha. Now that everything's installed, we're gonna take our charged battery. We're gonna pass this pretty much right through the very middle of our battery slot. And then we get to go ahead and check our center of gravity. As I put my fingers right over the dots here, we're gonna, we can move our battery forward and backward to get the perfect amount of center of gravity. This is perfect. It's actually just a touch nose down or very level. And that's exactly where I want it to be for its first flight. Now that we have our center of gravity established, let's go ahead and take you through the binding sequence. And at that point, we're ready to take this out and fly it. The first step we're gonna do is we're gonna connect our charged battery here. A little wiggle on the connectors here, just take your time, line it up. There we go, and press it through. And we're also gonna take our transmitter, and if you haven't by now, make sure you put three charged AA batteries in the back. The binding sequence for this is incredibly easy. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on our flight control board and you're gonna notice a rapid flashing red light. Once you have that rapid flashing red light, make sure your throttle on your left is all the way down. Press the button one time. That rapid flashing red light's gonna turn to a slow flashing red light. At this point, we can advance the throttle all the way to full throttle, all the way back down. You're gonna hear a beep from your transmitter. This light's gonna go solid and now we're all bound. The really cool thing about this is one transmitter can fly many, many different easy planes. Even our old generation one easy airplanes can fly off of this transmitter as well. Let's go ahead and test to make sure that all of our motor orientation is working properly. The easiest way is to give us a little bit of throttle. And as we move our motors, we should feel resistance from the motor that we're moving backwards. So we move our blue motor back, it's increasing throttle. Move our red motor back, it's increasing throttle. That means our gyros are working properly. Next, we're gonna check our, make sure our differential control is working. We're gonna give it throttle once again. When I push it to the left, my right motor should go up, which it does, the blue motor. When I push it towards the right, our red motor or our left side should spool up. And that works perfectly. At this point, friends, we're ready to take this out and fly it. This would be the perfect time to decorate it the way you want, make it your own, make it individual, and let's go outside and have some fun. All right, friends, we are blessed with a beautiful, calm day here. We are going to be flying our FT Easy Butterfly. Now, make sure that just like we did on the workbench, you have your battery installed and your center of gravity has been checked and it's proper. Our next step is we're going to power on our flight controller. You should see a rapid flashing light. Now we can power on our transmitter, go full throttle, close throttle, and that beep and the solid lights indicate that it's now bound. One other step that we're going to do to get the best control possible is we're going to click the upper right hand button. When we do this, you'll see a red light flashing on our transmitter. That means we're in high rates. Low rates will give really long sweeping turns, and oftentimes it's much easier to control this under high rates. For takeoff, we don't need full throttle because these batteries are so powerful. We're just gonna give this a little over half throttle, toss it, and adjust our throttle accordingly. There's no wind today, so I'm just gonna toss it to my right, but if you have a little bit of wind, make sure you always launch it into the wind. All right, let's see how it goes. <laughs> And you can see it has no problem climbing and it pulls right out of my hands. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and throttle back to a little bit over quarter throttle, about third throttle. And if you've flown our Easy Pack V1s, you can remember that it usually took a lot more throttle to make these planes fly. Because you have all of this extra power, you can do great things like basically, you know, power loops, wing overs, and have a lot of fun as you get more advanced. Now, what I really love about the Easy Pack and specifically our Easy Butterfly is it's incredibly maneuverable, which means if you're in a small gymnasium and at a school, at a church, you can have a great experience. It's also incredibly stable. 
It never gets old seeing different shapes take to flight and also the amazing characteristics you can get. You can take what you learn from each one of these designs, combine them in different ways, and design your own airplanes as well. Just remember, if it glides, it flies. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and give this power. We're gonna try to have a little bit of fun here because this has so much extra power. And you can see when we give this full throttle, it really just kind of just pulls itself right into the air. Let's do a spin going down. Spins are achieved when you cut the throttle all the way back and you push it all the way to the left or the right. Now, whenever I want to descend and be able to land this, keep about 10% throttle as you descend and cut it right before you touch the ground or you catch it. There we are. <laughs> Friends, I want to thank you for being part of the Flight Test family. Thank you so much for taking the time to build with us and fly with us and create memories. The FT Easy Nature Pack is now available. I'm so excited to see these go into schools and the churches and everything in between. The FT Easy Pack is a really great example of how science, aviation, and God's creation match up in a beautiful way. Can't wait to see you next time.